Hello, welcome to another episode of Talk with Wan, a leadership podcast. My name is Wan. I'm your host for this episode. In this episode, we have a guest with a type a credential, master certified coach by International Coaching Federation. She is also partner for Vertical Mindset Indicator, senior principal for a consulting company, and she's also president of her own company, Hwise, and fellow with Institute of Coaching for Coaching. Please welcome guest for this episode, Jane Ryback. Hey, Juan. Great to see you. Welcome. Jane. Good morning to you. Yes. Your week. Yes. Yep. Thank you for coming to this episode. I really appreciate it. Great to be here. Is there there's one thing you want to share with our audience and participant that I have not mentioned? <clears throat> that you haven't mentioned yet? Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I want to share, just one thing. Just one thing. <laughs> about yourself. About yourself. Oh, about myself. Oh mm. gosh. Um, uh, it sounds like I I'm doing a lot, but I'm actually doing less than I've ever done before, because um, about eight years ago I made a commitment to myself that anything I was ambivalent about I would say no. Mm. So ambivalence was a no. So everything I do right now is something that's a very clear and uh, enthusiastic yes in my life. So it sounds like I'm doing a lot, but actually I'm, I'm doing exactly what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing. So it's, it's really, really great work. And um, the, uh, particularly the work I'm doing um, with uh, Nick and Carl and the team with the VMI. Mm -hmm. and bringing that into the more um, democratized space. Uh, so, so that's what I'll say. It sounds like I'm doing a lot and like I never sleep, but I sleep really well and a lot and uh, work is truly, truly uh, just right. Mm. From what you, from what you share, I sense that not only you are focused, you are also being uh, strategic. Yep. What do you mean? Say more. What do, what do you? So when you say that, you say that you seem to do quite a bit or more. Mm -hmm. And I sense that you are putting your time into the things that you are passionate about. Yeah. And therefore, I kind of like sense that you are being strategic. Yes. Yeah, strategic. I think the word I might use is intentional. Mm -hmm. Very intentional. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, yeah, I think there's times in my life where I haven't been able to be intentional. Mm -hmm. I've had to do, what I need to do for whatever reason, but it's all, it's, it's intentional. Mm -hmm. what, what I feel like I uniquely can do. Yes. Hmm. I'm also curious where is this intention at the moment? <clears throat> Where's the intention at the moment? Yes. With the work or right yes. now? Uh, with the, your work. So that's a great question. So the intention <clears throat> with my work right now is um, about taking this it's sort of like vertical leadership development is the vehicle, but it's mm -hmm. not so much about vertical leadership development. It's um, making it possible for people, leaders, not just leaders, but anybody, uh, in particularly in the workspace, to uh, move beyond development as an event. Like, you mm -hmm. know, in the leadership development space, we, tra we do trainings. We have coaching sessions, we 
write books. All of these things are like developmental events. Mm -hmm. Moving beyond that to seeing development as a habit so that everything we do, every conversation we have, um, every moment almost, if that doesn't feel too grand, is an opportunity to grow, to expand, to consider, to unfold, to mm. be shaped in a different way, in a new way, uh, to um, consider what else is possible. Mm. And if you think about development as habit, as opposed to event, it changes. It changes what we're actually doing when we develop. As um, you, yeah, as you said that there's one image in my mind. Mm -hmm. Learning in development is not like <clears throat> there's a start and end. Right. And every moment, it could be an opportunity for me either to learn something or unlearn something. Yeah. Exactly. And what happens when you uh, step into that? What changes? What happens? I felt that I make the connection with the moment because I'm paying attention. And I also felt that the learning is much more personal than just somebody said, I need to do A, B, C. Yes. And I try to do it with my own situation, my own professional journey. Yeah. It's beautiful. When I heard it's, it's waking up, it's another way of waking up. Yes. I think the word waking up is, it sounds like normal, like we wake up every day, I hope. <laughs> At the same time, there is a deeper meaning that, 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 that we need to wake up from something. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just, I'm curious what we need to be aware more of. Yeah. In your yeah. perspective. Good question. Uh, I, I don't know if it's a thing that we need to be more aware mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. as much as awareness itself as an action mm -hmm. to um, engage, enliven us. Uh, 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 um, so, because, well, I guess, I guess if there's one thing maybe to be more aware of, it's that uh, life is constantly emerging. Mm -hmm. The future, what, what's, it's constantly emerging. Mm. And how do we stay at that edge? and consider, well, what is being asked of me now? What's being asked of us now? And how can we uh, bring ourselves, how can we grow ourselves to meet that opportunity? Mm -hmm. There's one word caught my attention, um, that. emerging. Mm. So I imagine I'm wearing my expert hat, right? I'm the expert in some domain mm -hmm. and I read some of your articles uh, on the internet, on some of the website like the International Institute of Coaching. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm interested to try out this thing called vertical um, development. And when you say the emerging, see, so, so it, it gives me some kind of uh, discomfort or tension. Because I want to know more. If I want to be expert in vertical development, what should I do? Great, great, great. So um, if you want to become expert in vertical development, uh, you know, the, the first thing that you probably want to do is um, I consider what, what does it, what would it actually look like to be expert in vertical development for, for the sake of what, right? Mm -hmm. What is it that 
want to become expert in? Is it to be able to coach other people? Is it to be able to develop myself? So that's the first place to start. Um, and then the other thing is that, you know, getting a grounded sense of what vertical development actually is mm -hmm. and what it is not. Mm. Because uh, vertical leadership development, vertical development is really a framework. It's a model. That's it. It's a mm -hmm. framework. It's a model. And those of us who are in this field for any significant amount of time learn that models are disposable, right? All models are wrong. Some are useful. Mm. So understanding how best you can use it and where it has its limitations is probably the first place to start. So learning about vertical development, what it is and what it isn't. And there's several folks that you can read to learn about that. You can certainly read, you know, my articles, read my, my, my partner, my colleague, Nick Petrie's articles about vertical development. You could read um, Robert Keegan's work, um, Jennifer Garvey Berger's work, um, A Changing on the Job is a great, great book. Um, to read, you could read Bill Torbett's article, The Seven Transformations of a Leader that came out in 2000 and what was it, 2004, 2007, mm -hmm. HBR. There's many articles you can read to get a real grounding in what vertical development is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, um, and in a nutshell, I'll just tell you in a nutshell, and I know that you got a really good description from Michael Hammer on his and the podcast you did with him too. In a nutshell, what vertical development or vertical leadership development, also known as ego construct development, adult stage development, <clears throat> there's a couple other terms that have been used, is the way it's a um, pattern of growth, a pattern of stages that we move through in adulthood mm. of expanding. Uh, mindset capacity. Mm -hmm. Action logic is another word we use for mindset, action logic capacity, forms of mind. The idea is that as we grow in adulthood, the way we grow is by expanding our capacity to see, understand, empathize, and respond mm -hmm. with greater range. So yes. Yeah and things so that we are not as grabbed up or subject to experience mm -hmm. we can hold it more object yes so yes yes it's grabbed up and that's what vertical leadership development is and to become expert in it means to learn about the different stages and how they show up mm -hmm. folks and um uh what that means for growth development so what it is doing is it's providing a map. Mm -hmm. Vertical development frameworks are basically providing a map. Yes. And we really prefer to think of it as a map as opposed to like a yardstick <laughs> to measure you. <laughs> it's offering you a map to say, this is how you tend to make sense of things, your tendency. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for how you show up? Mm -hmm. And what does that mean for some potential limitations? Yes. Yeah. And to make sense of things. Mm -hmm. And this framework, this um, map, points to some very predictable patterns mm -hmm. for how we make sense and what does that mean for what's next? Yes. What we'll build on it. Mm. Make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Thanks for the sharing. <laughs> There's one word caught my attention, um, pattern, pattern. So from my experience, this pattern require my awareness and my focus. Yeah. And through my own experience, I felt that it's like every moment I being asked, what could be the other way of responding? Yeah. And I also felt the tension in me. I want to stay the way I am. And yeah. I sometimes would rather not go to the possibility of other, uh, uh, other possibility in the map. Right. Yeah. So 
maybe share with us if you're going to share a tip on working with this tension. I want to stay who am I at the moment. And I also know that there is a oh. next, next stage or next uh, possibility. Okay. Such an exquisite question. I'm so glad you asked that. So here's the thing about vertical development. It's kind of like everyone wants to go to heaven and no one wants to die. You know, we all want, we all want to develop and grow, but we don't want to give up what's familiar. Mm -hmm. And the thing about vertical development is like, you're really not happier, wealthier, or even sexier at these later stages, right? It's work. It takes work. It mm -hmm. takes a lot of having to let go of things that are familiar, that are um, comfortable to step mm -hmm. into what is uncomfortable. And that's why when we talk about vertical development, we talk about what we think of as the three circles of development. Mm -hmm. Eight experiences. So experiences that are so hot that you need to let go of your habitual ways of thinking, feeling, and doing to pick up something different. So you put yourself in a situation that's risky. You put yourself in a situation where you can't keep doing what you've always done. Mm -hmm. So it's uncomfortable enough. It's mm -hmm. hot enough that you're willing to change. It's not so hot and uncomfortable that you're going to burn yourself up, right? Mm -hmm. So you find a heat experience. That's one. So examples of that might be like a detail overseas or taking leadership of a team where your expertise doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You're not the con you're not the expert here. You have to lead the people, and you have to. So there are lots of different examples of heat experiences. Certainly, raising a family can be a heat experience. Um, uh, getting married, um, <laughs> they're staying married. Um, colliding perspectives is another element of vertical growth, and what we mean by colliding perspectives is putting yourself in a situation where you are exposed to different ideas, different concepts. So coaching can be that, mentoring can be that, stopping and saying, how might I be wrong can be that. Mm -hmm. Getting feedback and really listening to the feedback and staying in the conversation can be that. Um, so lots of different ways to get different perspectives and consider what might actually be helpful here. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is what we call reflection or elevated sense making. And that's where you have to stop and consider what did it actually take to do that? Mm -hmm. What had to shift to make that possible? Or um, another, another type of reflection might be um, what gets in the way when I do that? What makes that hard? What do I need to let go of? And what that's doing is it's actually taking habit <clears throat> out of the old brain, it's popping it to the new brain, right? The prefrontal cortex and the executive functioning and the part of us that helps to create, lay down new neural pathways. So when you reflect, you're actually creating those kinds of mm -hmm. pathways. And then I always add this fourth circle, which is uh, getting clear about why you're doing it in the first place. Because as you said, you may not want to leave the comfort zone of what you know and consider something new. Mm -hmm. You need to have a damn good reason to do it. Yes. You know, make it worth doing. And so that helps to bring that intention front and center. Mm. Yes. I felt so much joy at this moment that we have this conversation. Mm. Not only you share with us some um, examples of development uh, journey and habit, like many examples, right? Uh, leading a team, being in the relationship, the reflection, mm -hmm. and having a purpose for this shift. And I also know that you are creator of a vertical mindset indicator. Maybe share a bit with our audience what it is. Okay. Yeah, so the vertical mindset indicator, um, and for those who um, aren't familiar with vertical leadership development, there are some um, pretty darn good tools out there, assessments out there. One's called the MAP, the 
mature adult profile. The other is called the global leader profile. Uh, another one's called the subject object interview. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few others out there, leadership development um, uh, profile, I think LD LDF, I forget what it's uh, the full name of it. And these are all set in STEM completion instruments. So mm -hmm. up till now, the, mo the, the main tool used to assess vertical development is language based. So set and STEM interview in set and STEM assessment based on the Washington University set and STEM completion tool or an interview, in-depth interview, like the subject object interview. And all of these tools are scored manually by someone like myself who's been scored over a pretty rigorous process to know how to identify um, patterns and what the language is indicating about mindset tendency or action logics. And what that means is even though these tools are really good, very robust, they take a long time. You don't get it right away. You don't get results right away. And they're expensive. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for that reason, they've sort of been stuck at the top of the house, you know, and you know, the people are, you're going to spend a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, ten thousand dollars on someone at the top of the organization rather than people throughout the organization. And so there's been this belief that this is for people at the top, people who they're the only ones dealing with complexity. They're the only ones dealing with ambiguity. So they're the ones who need this tool that deals with vertical development, which deals with complexity and ambiguity. Well, guess what? One, everybody today is dealing with ambiguity, complexity, uncertainty. Yes. And we're finding people throughout the organization really get this and need this. So um, Nick Pitry and Carl Sanders Edwards uh, and uh, got together and, you know, with the brilliance of Carl's team and, and Nick's uh, real um, what a keen ability. He's just really good at making things um, accessible. Mm -hmm. to mainstream without dumbing it down, uh, uh, teamed up and with this algorithm mm. using AI and uh, using the algorithm, the um, scoring rubrics and manuals that my mentor, Shazan Cook Reuter, came up with as well as myself and another score or two to train up this algorithm mm -hmm. to be able to score a subset of the larger assessment using AI. So we've got an algorithm now that can score. Right now we're scoring nine items from the Washington University Sentence Stem Completion Instrument, which is a, um, a quarter of the instrument mm -hmm. and scores it instantly using the algorithm. We continually feed. I also kind of do some hand scoring with it and continue to feed back to the algorithm. So it's getting very, very accurate. Mm -hmm. And so people get will complete these sentence stems online. They get a report within a day. Mm -hmm. uh, the report is um, not customized, except for a little graph you get. Mm -hmm. Or the plate report, a couple pages. And what's different about what you get with the vertical mindset indicator is two things. Mm -hmm. The first is, that we're very clear that this is an indicator. It's mm. not an assessment. And the reason why we do that is because we want people to stumble into their own awareness and understanding of their results. What feels most true to them? We feel like it's very important to hold stage lightly and take growth seriously. Mm. So we don't care where you come out. What we care about is what resonates for you here. It's very easy to become hierarchical and um, very fixated on how high you are in this vertical scale. Yes. But most important is, does this resonate and how does this show up for you? So we call it an indicator and then invite you to read your report and the report for the stage before your stage and the stage after your stage. And amongst those three, which is only like a total of six or seven pages, mm you know, what feels most true, because we're never just in one stage, we're often straddling a few stages, mm -hmm. depending on what's true for us um, in the moment. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is the part 
that's customized about this experience is what we call a digital debrief process. Mm -hmm. So rather than being an assessment, this indicator is an invitation to an experience. Mm -hmm. So what happens if I can just share the screen real quickly sure. is, let me just find it here. There we go. What happens is I'm just going to go to Deepak, who is our, my colleague with this. What happens is you complete the VMI here mm -hmm. and you go to what we call the digital debrief. Well, you see that's Nick. Yes. And then what you do is you, he just wrote tests. So we don't, I don't want to expose anybody's answers to the whole group here. So mm -hmm. we just got tests here, mm -hmm. but you've got questions here that invite you to engage with your report, reflect on it, mm -hmm. consider the different stages and what it would be like to take your, a situation from a later stage and an earlier stage. Mm -hmm. What's your organizational culture? Mm. How does the way you make sense of things um, uh, correspond to what goes on in your organization? Mm. And then what does that mean for what you need to work on to build yeah. range or improve? Mm. And so you come back here to identify a key insight and what you want to focus on. Mm. And if you want, you can even put in, I want to have a timeline and I want to be reminded. You can even do that if you want, because with the VMI, you actually have three months access to this online. Mm. You can also have a coach. You can reach out to a coach and say, I want some help coming up with a goal. Um, we might also, if this is part of a program, we, we might also just write a comment, you know, like you you know, like your response mm. or add a comment to something we read. So it's actually a way to, um, rather than just get a report where we tell you what this means, mm. it asks you to determine what does this mean for you? Yes. Thank you for sharing the um, excellent <laughs> sharing of a vertical mindset indicator. Uh, what I make up is like what you share beside the assessment where the magic happened. I felt that as a participant and a user, it is connecting with me because it's not just a standard report. It's also helping me to make meaning from that report. And I got to, at, at, at least I have a chance to create some action and decide what I would like to do with this report, yeah. with the indicator and myself. Yeah. And I felt very much empowered. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. And that's what a lot of people say. And we've been frankly blown away mm -hmm. on about um, some of the comments people make, you know, what they're gonna do and how I mean, folks get it, they get it, they really do. And um, they often, so we, we, we often build coaching onto the back end of this in mm -hmm. two different ways. One would be either as a group debrief or we could have you know anywhere from like six to 50, we've had 50, we've had 75 in a group debrief. Mm -hmm. And we've had people comment after an hour and 15 minute group debrief that it felt like they were getting one-on-one -on -one coaching. Mm -hmm. Yes. The only thing I can figure is that's because they've gone through this experience. And then mm -hmm. when they show up for the group session in their breakout groups, they're having to continue to chew on it. Mm -hmm. We've also found that we're able to do a lot more in a lot less time with one on one coaching. Mm -hmm. So we do half hour coaching debrief sessions, um, which allows us to keep the cost down for the coaching. Mm -hmm also allows organizations to easily integrate this with like a developmental program, a training program. Uh, and people show up to these one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions primed. They're mm. ready to go. They've already digested it. Yes, and yes, yes. Wow. <laughs> what a sense that 
this program has demonstrated the shift from uh, development, uh, as a, development as an event to a habit because it's a continuous process. Hmm. Yeah. I, al I also felt that, that, that there's a thought in behind all this. And you share quite a lot about the, pro the indicator and the program. And I can see the, the tremendous effect on the participant. And you share one thing that to be committed to vertical development, we must be clear of the why. Mm -hmm. I believe you have shared your personal why in this program. Is it more you would like to share with us? why you create this program? Hmm. You know, I, you know, I think another element of the why that I feel confident saying that my, my partners share too, is that we real we, we, we want to, for lack of a better word, democratize this concept of development. Um, we feel that, uh, as Carl is fond of saying is, you know, what scales doesn't work and what works doesn't scale. Mm. We know that transformative development, that this work is transformative. Mm. It goes, it goes under behavior to the mindsets that shape and drive behavior. Mm. And, you know, it's taken coaching, you know, real intense coaching to help people get there. And what we're hearing, what we're finding over and over again is that having a map, a framework like this, and an entry to uh, wrestle with this or dance with this framework and find out how it's, as you said, uh, personal to you, mm. allows people to go deep, to yeah. get to that transformative work on their own quickly in a way that's affordable and scalable. Mm. So that to me actually is, is I get really jazzed. I, I really, I get very excited about that because I think that, um, you know, if you're not developing, if you're not growing, what, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. You know, what are we doing here? You know, it's, it's, it, it, there's, there's so much more mm. to explore, discover, grow. Yes. I think we share quite a bit from generally about vertical development and some strategy or how and also you share quite a bit about a vertical mindset indicator there is one feeling come to me i felt excited and at the same time a bit nervous and i would like to shift a bit of the focus from the leader to from the coach perspective. So I'm excited as a coach, right? Democrat, uh, make vertical development available for more people. Mm -hmm. And then you say a few words about coaching. Mm -hmm. I think I remember correctly, you say that this group coaching could be better than one-to-one -one coaching. And that create a bit of um, nervousness in me. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, they're taking away my coaching secret decoder ring. <laughs> I'm thrown out of the yeah, uh, hear me. What I felt a bit tension is like I spent a lot of hours yeah, learning right. about coaching, and you are master certified coach. So I felt that to service part of our audience who are coaches. Right. How do they, not say what, I would say how. What should coaches make meaning from this wave, right? Yes. AI is going to be with us for maybe another 20, 30 years, maybe. How would you share with our coaches that to see this wave of yeah. the digitalization? So we're always going to need coaches. <clears throat> we're always going to need people who can connect with people. And um, what 
I think the AI is doing and the group coaching is doing is doing a lot of the stuff that um, is kind of routinized, right? People are still going to need coaches to help them unpack, to be witness to their experience, to um, help them identify developmental opportunities. I think that we need to be, as um, I like to say, uh, um, nimble, mm -hmm. curious, and courageous ourselves as coaches to explore what are other ways that we can be applying our craft. What mm. other ways we can be connecting with people in ways that um, that work? I mean, I uh, you know I jokingly talk about it in my one of my articles about how uh, when my son started his first consulting job and told me about having to uh, give feedback to a more an older colleague, and it went really well. And I said, well dude, how'd you do that? I mean, that's not easy. He goes, well, I Googled it. You know, there's, there's a whole generation of folks that that's how they learn how to do things. Mm. So we need to, as coaches, understand, so what is it they need from us? They don't need us to tell us how to give feedback, but maybe there's something else they need. And what might that be? So what we're, what we're finding is people still need to interact with us as coaches. And that uh, the stuff that up we're not doing bot coaching, by the way. The mm -hmm. we should get on the VMI platform is not bots. It's actually me or Nick <laughs> or some of our other coaches are being trained. So, um, and they're getting enough, but if they really want to have a conversation and unpack stuff, they're going to reach out and have a real coaching conversation. Mm. After you share, right, I feel slightly uh, better. I feel more full. <laughs> on one hand you bring clarity to the current situation that is what we have and the trend mm -hmm. and you share with the coaches some possibility some light and also inspired by what you are doing by offering your skill like you say codify right I kind of sense that you, I want to let go, share more with your expertise and you are moving to another perspective. Possibly higher, but that is not the crucial part. I think by letting go what we used to have, it's possible that we can grow to. Yeah. If you think about the power of a coaching engagement, one to one mm -hmm. and you can expand that to one to 20. Yes, yes, exactly. One to 50. Mm -hmm. And folks can take that further. We all know that coaching is contagious when you can, a culture can shift when people experience the type of um, uh, both uh, pragmatic and aspirational mm -hmm. conversations that come with coaching that um, just think about the impact we can have. Yeah. Most coaches I know, every coach I know, when I ask them why they do what they do, what do they say? What do they usually say when you ask mm. coaches what they do? Um, at least from my perspective, I felt that I could help someone to grow and to make the purpose more clear and maybe alive. Yeah. 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 Yes. And I also hear and to to make this world a better place. Mm. Not that we necessarily know what that's going to take, because I don't think anybody knows what it's going to it's going to take. Uh, I think that's a lot of the, the motivation that underlies a lot of why we do what we do and why coaching has taken off the way it has mm. that's underneath. Um, and, and when you, you know, let's, it, let's make this real business focused for a second. Mm -hmm. Leaders are in a world of pain. Yes. Organizations are in a world of pain. People are not happy. They're working super hard. They're getting demands from many, many, many places. 
they're scared. There's so much uncertainty out there. We're having to figure out how to do hybrid workplaces and people feel disconnected to their colleagues. So there's a huge opportunity, a huge need for folks to feel more connected to what they do, how they invest their energy, the people they work with, the why they do what they do, or even the returns for what they do. And if coaching can help people connect with that, and one thing about the intentional, bring intention in to have an impact, why wouldn't we want to make it more accessible? Mm. Wow. Thank you, Jane. We have talked close to 45 minutes. We started with generally about uh, tipping our toes in vertical development. And we, you share quite a bit about uh, vertical mindset indicator and also the digital platform. And we also talk about what could be possible for coaches in this age of technological advance. I'm curious, do you have a message or some sharing for our participants and audience? Oh, gosh. Um, well, the first is I'd love to hear how this resonates for people, coaches mm -hmm. and leaders and organizational stakeholders. I'd love to hear how this lands for folks. So, you know, reach out, let us know what you what you what you're hearing, what uh, what's keeping you up at night, how this how this resonates. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I want to just build onto the thing for coaches is what we've just launched our practitioner licensing program. Mm -hmm. So uh, coaching practitioners mm -hmm. can actually become licensed to use the VMI and mm -hmm. to coach in a platform like you saw and to deliver one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you're interested, that's something you can reach out and find out more about. Um, and I, you know, the, you know, the, the, gosh, there's so, there's so much. Um, I think that the, the one thing that I'd like to leave you with and the listeners with is this idea that this is not a race to the top. Vertical development, despite the term vertical, is not a race to the top. It's a journey, as you said. It's an experience. Um, the way we grow vertical is through experience. It's through letting ourselves be um, transformed through what we do, how we do it, how we interact with others, allowing ourselves to be transformed. And in that transformation, what we actually do is we build range we build greater capacity so then we can respond to different situations with that capacity. So that's really what we're doing here with the vertical growth. It's ironic that we call it vertical. Um, maybe that's just to grab attention, but um, it's, it's uh, you know, as a short person, I guess I'm not that vertically development develop, developed. <laughs> Thank you, Jen, for sharing such a wonderful message. Just for the listener, all the details will be shared in the description of the video. Please uh, check that out and also reach out to Jen if you are interested in coaching and the vertical mindset indicator. Jen, is it a good time that we pause this conversation? Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for your time.